Hello there. In this video, we're going over how to install, how to use, and why you should install Comfy UI. You may be familiar with different online services like Leonardo AI or any other ones. You also may be using your local installation of Stable Diffusion, like this one with Automatic 11.11 distribution. And this is a very powerful type of applications that can work very well for us. However, Comfy UI offers something different from other application. And this is a node based dreaming environment. So if you work with any other application like Cinema 4D, um, DaVinci Resolve, Vue, any other ones, many of them utilize the node system. And it's because it's very easy to flow, very nice to configure, and it's very understandable. But it's come with a price. Understandable level, it's come when you start working with this. So what are we going to do? We're going to have it step by step how we can install it. And after this, we'll look how we can work with this and also how this Comfy UI can teach us about stable diffusion and how it works. Links to all resources that we're going to use in this video I will provide down below in description. So first we need going and download the application itself. This is located on GitHub. And when we're going to Comfy UI, you can download it all repository, but it's now much, much easier to install it. All what you need to do, scroll down on installations and click direct link to download. It will download it one big file with a 7-zip format. By default, Windows may not recognize this extension, so you can download it 7-zip extractor, or personally, I like to use it WinRAR. WinRAR is free to use applications and will open most of the archives in different formats. After you open archive, create directory, for example, I created in my D drive and extract files there. You'll notice it will create some subdirectory. Next step, you want to go ahead and click on this very big screaming letters, read me, very important. So as we open this file, you'll notice right here, it's got simple instructions. Let me go over them. One, of course, if you run on NVIDIA GPU, you want to start with run NVIDIA GPU. If you want just run on CPU, and if you have like AMG video card, you want just one CPU. So you have a two different models you can run, which is kind of nice. The also below, it's very important. The one, if you want to update, you can run update at beginning, which I actually recommend to do before you first launch. So it's can take the latest code if for some reason you get older or it wasn't updated. So in this case, you'll just run update comfy UI batch file located in update. If any problems occur during installations, you probably want to run update comfy UI and Python dependency. But this is only run in a case you have some errors. Also, you do need to have it some checkpoint or a models that you're going to use, but don't hurry to download them because we can reuse it them from what we already have it. If you use it before stable diffusion or any other models, we can link to them. And you can notice down below right here, it's actually tell what file we can use it. And we go ahead and open and edit this file if we need it. Let's look a little bit on a structure. When it's created, you notice inside we have a directory called models. And the models important for us is this checkpoint. Notice I already copy some of the models directly in here from Stable Diffusion. You can do this one way. The other ways we can actually reference those models that already exist on our in our case. For example, here's my installations, same on the D drive Stable Diffusion. And I already have it. If I go down to my models and I go down to Stable Diffusion, I already have these models. So you can always copy if you feel this way, but it's much easier not utilize more space just to point to them and this we need to go back to our the comfy ui let's go right here portable and in here 
we want to go down to Comp UI and open the file called Extra Model Path Yalm Example. Notice one about it's the same. I just only remove example and it's how we'll read. Open this file in a text editor you like it and let's modify like right here you can see base path this is where my stable diffusion located the next it's representing directories and by default it will locate it in model stable diffusion and if you remember it is right here stable diffusion models located the after this we have it our configs lower models if you have it upscale the one different I found it is when you reference control net because in many cases if you're using stable diffusion after magic 11 11 you may use it as an extension to install control net and in this case when you do it it won't install necessary in control net folders in here it will be empty instead it will going to the extensions will going to the control net and inside the control net it will put this models inside the folder so all you need to do click on the top copy that path go back to your yarn file and just add right here extensions remember because we have it on the top already path kind of leading to this we just need it start from place where it's begin in this case it will be extension sd if you don't remember let's paste it and you can see right here we already have this one top right here and all we need extension i just also changed the slashes to be over slashes instead backward after you done this with with this be sure you save this file as extra underscore models underscore path yaml and just remove example this way you will have it all the models they already downloaded you don't need to re-download them again but this is one way if you like to experiment with models and everything you can do just copy them in those directors so either way will work when you're done with modifying just go back and run which one you win or you want cpu or nvidia in my case i have it rtx uh, 3090 so i will run gpu batch when you run first time it may take a little bit time to load it actually right here before even pop up this new server ip address for me i was actually sitting about 15 minutes around this area so it was take a little bit time and when i was watching my internet activity it was downloading probably some missing components or updating after completed you should see this it says to see we go to the your local address you can press control and click on this and this way you can open the computer UI in your browser you can open a multiple windows if you need it which is kind of get handy if you work with a different type of interface so let's look what we have here and this is actually not basic it's what we said before and you can see it's kind of start and we have it our load checkpoint on the left going through all the components and we have it save image on the end it seems like workflow going from left to right in some cases it does however it does not directly represent some elements for example between the variable after encoder and our sampler it will going multiple connections so it's not just one but again it is kind of representing and when we start processing you'll notice how the nodes will highlight green as the process going forward so it's a very good way to learn so let's go check what we have right here we have it our checkpoint and this is where we read and select what checkpoint or models we're going to use next we have it our encoder clip encoder text we also have it our negative you can always get and replace this text if you need it but for now we leave it as a default next we have it also our latent image where we have it information with height and also batch file next we have it our sampler and we have it our way in decoder so what is that sampler and uh, variable 
after encoder does. So let's check on this. The our sampler, it will take just image and process the noising. By the way, I will leave it all these links to these resources for you down below. So if you're interested, you can go and learn and see more how it works. But for this purpose, I will just simplify. So think about the sampler. It will take creating noise, predicted noise, and denoising to create our image. And our variation of the encoder, it needs to recognize what we done in this image. So in some cases, it is check on an image and does it work with what we put it in a prompt. And if we look on our comfy, you can see very easy how it's work. Right here, we have a communication between checkpoint, which is have it all information for what encoded and it's passed to our V decoder. Let's see what's going on. So we're going from our clip model. We put it our positive, negative. We put our information. Our sampler going to create, remember this, digital noise and it's again it's a base it from the model that we're supplying so it will be close to our model next it's a denoising happen here and our decoder will say does it look what we're asking for so in some cases this is have it some little loop but it's okay it doesn't show here because all what we care in this case is how the system flow and we have it our end result this is a very simple setup. The beauty of this is that we can modify and add additional noise. Note for this, we just right click and it's open menu. And you can notice right here we have a multiple different type of the node. For example, we can go ahead and in an image, let's go say upscaling. And we can go to select upscale our image. Next, we can do select our image node. And node selecting it's easy, just click, drag, and place it between. So in this case, we can say wherever image is processing, and now it's 528 by 768, we can actually increase, for example, width 768, and we can do our width 124. Okay, for this. So then you can notice right here as we're selecting. Now our image will be upscaled to resolution as we specify. So it's that easy. Of course, it's have it way more. You can have it in painting, you can have it control net, you can have it even as the Excel model here as well. So in this case, you can create it. Of course, you want to understand how other nodes working. And the best place for this, go to comfy examples. If you scroll down right here, you can see examples of image to image in painting, Laura and all of this. So for example, let's go see image to image as we open. Let's have it some explanation. It's most important. This is for our node layout. So we click on the nodes. You can see what it was using and how they're connecting. Experimenting is very nice here because all what you need to do just try to go and connect to all of these different nodes see how they work together and experiment with them another one interesting ability what they build with comfy ui it is have information and metadata for the image so it's meaning when i create image inside comfy i can just drag and drop or click on load and it's preloading with all the nodes and system it was creating. So it's have it all information how this image was created, which is excellent if you want to share with your friends or your enemies um, how that image is built. This is great, great, and I think this is, should be almost in every image. And actually it does, if you remember in some stable diffusion, if you're going inside the image to image or actually PNG info, you can download here image and this will provide some information. And right here, example, it's reading metadata. You notice this is metadata from Comfy UI, but we have it all necessary workflow all information is stored inside the image. So same things if you do with stable diffusion, it will have it some information inside how it was created. Okay, so all of this fun, let's go just create a couple things. Right here we can put it our information and then we'll just leave it default what is come, same as negative mark. We leave it same 
uh, just maybe higher width and height. We also put it a little bit upscaler as we've done before. And all what you need to do, click uh, cue the prompt. You'll notice as it's turned green, right here, green, green, and it's done. Look, we have our image. We can open our image preview, and it is our 1024 by 760 resolution. For me, uh, in the end, I want to say I like how the system works. I do like the node approach because very custom to working with the nodes and other applications. And I think it's very visually understanding how the system work and allowed very interesting experimenting in a way you cannot do in other areas. Like, for example, the presets check boxes, preset drop down boxes right here. You literally can try to create all different samplers, maybe I'll try a couple different samplers or other ways. So you can create this flexible system how you want to work with this or maybe even take your image and run twice through the image or try to create more complex, which is definitely we're going to play around with this. But the, for me right now, biggest uh, minus of this, it is ability of the all these extensions that currently Automatical 11, 11 have. They have a huge library and big community support, but I'm sure with time, these ones will develop very big community as well and a big support thank you for watching this video please subscribe to the channel your support is greatly appreciated and have a great day